Um, Anne, we'll pass over to you now, if you're able to switch on. Great. Uh, thanks for that, John and, and Dimna. So, hello everybody, I'm Anne Cunningham and I'm going to take you through the Acres Cooperation uh, Project and just give you a little update on what's been going on on that stream. So, uh, the cooperation applies in the eight map zones that are areas of high nature value, hold significant carbon stores and are home to some of the most pristine waters in the country. The Cooperation Project, or CP, and I use CP throughout, is a qualitative rather than prescriptive approach, meaning the lands inside the zones will be assessed by yourselves and advisors using results-based scorecards. Uh, the scorecards are currently being finalised along with full guidance on their completion and the app through which they will be transmitted to the department. The CP teams have received various data sets from the department to enable their full assessment of the assets and habitats in each zone they are currently establishing their own teams and beginning to host farmer meetings and to provide information to potential acres applicants. Keep an eye on the department's social media platforms for more information. And you'll see here the list of uh, names that the uh, CP teams have taken for each of the zones. And uh, you can follow the hashtag acres on uh, social media to, to find out more information. So a general or CP zone, not all holdings will fit neatly inside or outside the map zones and a threshold has been applied. Holdings with greater than or equal to three hectares or greater than or equal to 20% of the farmer's land, whichever is the lower, which is declared as forage or habitat in the 2021 BPS and falls within an acre CP zone may only apply for the CP approach. A holding that crosses more than one CP zone will be assigned to the zone with the largest proportion. General actions are available to choose on land that is outside a CP zone, mindful of the 7,000 results-based payment ceiling. If you think your client's holding should be within a CP zone, but they're showing in the system as general, if you email us with the hard number, we'll be able to check that out for you. So scoring and payments. An acres application is based on parcels declared on the 2022 BPS. Rented or leased forage lands that, that is non commonage land in a CP zone do not have to be entered in an acres contract if the farmer feels that they won't have control of the land for the five year contact, contract. All owned CP forage parcels in the 2022 BPS must be scored and included in an acres contract if they are declared in the 2023 BIS application. Any lands not declared in 2023 BIS wouldn't be eligible for payment in acres. A farmer's core payment will come from the results based score achieved early next year. The CP teams will identify and delineate fields and assign the appropriate scorecard for that habitat. Advisors will then score the lands during the summer. This year one score will provide the baseline for the five year scheme. The fields will be scored again in years three and five. And where necessary, you know, the CP teams will be available to discuss habitats and the chosen scorecards. Results-based scoring is prioritised on lands in CP zones, but where a farmer cannot achieve the 7,000 ring fence for results-based scoring, there are options. Applicants can apply for three general actions on land within the CP zone. That's the traditional dry stone wall maintenance, the conservation of rare breeds, or low emission slurry spreading. They can also apply for other general actions on any land they may have outside their CP zone. That is, it is open to them to carry out non-productive investments or landscape actions, which may uh, enhance the scores achieved on their CP land. So some non-productive investments or landscape actions. Um, so this is how a farmer can improve their score. The CP teams will provide local detailed expert advice on how to maintain and improve habitats at farm and landscape level through the provision of certain non-productive investments and or 
in bigger areas, landscape actions. The full list will be published shortly, but we have some examples here. So for NPIs, we have provision of water for livestock, grazing infrastructure, hedgerow rejuvenation, and then bigger landscape actions would be fire prevention, targeted water quality measures, or participation uh, with common, common edge management groups. So this is where the collaboration between the farmer, you as the advisor, and the local CP team will come into play, working together to improve habitat scores. So a quick run through some timelines, some of which you'll already be familiar with. Um, the access agreement as you, facility, as you know, has been open since June. And uh, today, over 15,000 agreements have been completed for farmers within CP zones. Uh, you've been able to access maps for these farmers since August to help you prepare applications. And our IT colleagues tell us of the steady increase in draft applications since that was made available to approved advisors. The system will shortly be open to facilitate the submission of completed applications, but of course, you're free to continue to draft applications in the meantime. The final date for the submission of completed applications will be mid-November and is to facilitate the digitizing of any changes to parcels and the ranking and selection process, which will be completed mid to end December. So then a few timelines into 2023, uh, approvals will issue with contracts beginning from the 1st of January next year. And there's a few more important dates that I've already mentioned to deal with. Um, scorecards and that later on into the year. So where to find us? Well, DIM has already given us lots of information on where to find us, but you'll see on the department's front page, the acres uh, link right beside the lovely picture. And then the full menu of options when you, when you get to the next page. Um, we're putting up more and more information as time goes on, but the draft terms and conditions and specification are available there already. Uh, as John mentioned earlier, uh, there's FAQs and uh, webinar material. This webinar will also be going up um, in the coming days and more information will be added as we go along. And thank you very much. Thanks very much, Anne. Again, a, a lot happening within the, the CP, the bounds of the CP areas. The CP teams are doing an awful lot of work over the last uh, number of months. Um, so we'll see a lot of further developments. As Anne mentioned, we will be releasing the, the list of draft NPI shortly together with landscape actions as well. That'll help to provide more detail for farmers within these areas. And I guess the other one to be watching as well, depending on the area you're in, that the CP teams are running a number of uh, local events to sort of inform farmers and advisors of what they're doing in their specific areas.